A disaster prevention expert has been trying to determine why a landslide triggered by the quake had so much force. Kyoto University's Toshitaka Kamai studied the ground in Kumamoto and says a saturated layer of volcanic ash was to blame. Kamai says the hillside slid more than half a kilometer, even though the slope was gentle. He said that's because there was a 10-meter thick layer of ash above a layer of clay. Kamai thinks rain made the ash wet, and then the earthquake caused it to collapse. He believes the speed of the collapse gave the ash the momentum to travel so far and do so much damage. And he warned it's something that could happen again. Japan is a country with many volcanoes, so a disaster like this could happen anywhere where ash is mixed with pumice. Huge cracks have formed in roads in Kumamoto, and hillsides have collapsed in other locations. Kamai says clusters of homes could slide down hillsides if there is more rain or another major quake. Rescue crews in southwestern Japan are now searching around the clock for two people still missing following a series of earthquakes. The first one struck on Thursday of last week. The quakes have killed 48 people. Crews from police, fire departments and the self-defense forces are looking through giant mounds of dirt caused by landslides. One of the missing is a college student, Hikaru Yamato. Officials say he was driving near a bridge when it was hit by a wall of dirt. Rescuers cannot get close to that area because of the landslide risk. But Yamato's parents want officials to use a drone to continue searching. I can't stay home and do nothing. I can't abandon hope that my son will come home. It's hard. 80,000 people are still unable to return to their homes. They're staying in shelters or sleeping in cars. Authorities say some deaths could be linked to the stress and strain of life in a disaster zone. They say 11 people have died, mostly elderly. This includes a woman in her 70s who died after falling ill while taking shelter in her car. Masaki Goto and his family are among those staying in their vehicles. There's no room to move when I sleep and my back hurts. Goto is from the hardest hit town of Mashiki. He and his relatives crawled out of their collapsed house after a strong quake hit the town. Evacuees are afraid of more earthquakes as hundreds of jolts have shaken the region over the past week. Officials are urging everyone to remain on alert. Geological officials in Japan say the recent earthquakes in Kumamoto Prefecture have caused the ground to shift over a vast area. The Geospatial Information Authority analyzed data from the land observation satellite Daichi-2 to measure ground deformation caused by the quakes since April 14th. Officials found the ground shifted horizontally by 10 centimeters or more over an east-west stretch of about 80 kilometers and north-south for 40 kilometers. They say data show the ground moved more than 150 centimeters eastward in places where the highest seismic intensity was registered. On the north side of the fault zone, the ground subsided by more than 120 centimeters, and on the south side, more than 40 centimeters of upheaval was measured. People in southwestern Japan are still struggling with hundreds of continuing tremors seven days after they were hit by the first in a series of powerful earthquakes. Officials warn aftershocks could continue for at least another week. On top of that, heavy rain is threatening to make the situation even worse. The rain is hampering rescue workers in their search for two missing people. 48 people have died and more than a thousand others were injured. About 90,000 are taking refuge in evacuation shelters. Meteorological agency officials are urging people to remain on alert. The seismic activity is still continuing and I urge people in the area to stay vigilant. The agency says another threat is potential landslides because of loosened soil. Authorities are also telling tens of thousands of residents who have decided to stay in their homes to evacuate. My house has lost most of its roof tiles. I haven't covered it with plastic sheets yet, so the rain might ruin everything inside.
The ground could give way in an aftershock if the rain loosens it more. Meanwhile, some services are starting to be restored. The local power company says electricity has been reconnected to almost all houses in Kumamoto. I can now watch TV and know what's going on around here, so I feel calmer. But many homes are still without water or gas, and parts of highways and railways remain closed. A section of an elevated expressway in western Japan has collapsed. People's police say one person has been confirmed dead. Another was found with no vital signs. A section about 120 meters long crashed onto the road below. A construction team was working on the expressway at the time. Police say the crew was using a crane to lift the section into place. Police say eight people were injured, four of them seriously. The dead and injured are believed to be construction workers. People in southwestern Japan are still struggling with hundreds of continuing tremors more than one week after they were hit by the first in a series of powerful earthquakes. 48 people have died and more than 1,000 others were injured. Officials warn more quakes could continue for at least another week. About 90,000 are taking refuge in evacuation shelters. Meteorological agency officials are urging people to remain on alert. The seismic activity is still continuing, and I urge people in the area to stay vigilant. The agency says another threat is potential landslides because of loosened soil. Authorities are also telling tens of thousands of residents who have decided to stay in their homes to evacuate. Meanwhile, some services are starting to be restored. The local power company says electricity has been reconnected to almost all houses in Kumamoto. I can now watch TV and know what's going on around here, so I feel calmer. But many homes are still without water or gas, and parts of highways and railways remain closed. Japanese nuclear plant operators face a complex task, decommissioning aging reactors. One may soon reach a deal to obtain technological assistance from a U.S. firm. NHK has learned that Japan Atomic Power Company could sign a contract as early as Wednesday with a company called Energy Solutions. Sources say they'll work together to scrap the number one reactor at the Tsuruga plant in central Japan. And they say the two firms are considering a long-term partnership. They would jointly decommission reactors for other plant operators. Energy Solutions has dismantled more than 10 reactors in the U.S. and other countries. It has advanced technology for nuclear waste reduction and disposal. An expert says disposal is a key issue for Japan. Japan has never scrapped any reactors, so we need to work with experienced partners to improve technology. After the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident, regulators limited the lifespan of nuclear plants to 40 years. Plant operators have decided to scrap six reactors around Japan. With so many people taking refuge in their cars and temporary shelters, health experts are warning of a new threat that's left one person dead. NHK World's Keita Kato reports. These vehicles are parked at an evacuation center in the town of Mashiki. But the facility was damaged in the quake's aftermath. So the cars now serve as home for thousands of people. The cramped spaces are leading to serious health problems, the formation of blood clots. In medical terms, it's called deep vein thrombosis. It's also known as economy class syndrome, as it often affects air travelers. At least 20 people have been diagnosed with a potentially deadly condition. It's just another thing to worry about for Akiko Otsuka. She moved to Mashiki from Tokyo just one week before the quake. And now she lives in a car with her husband, four children, and their dog. The car is very <laughs> small for six people. So physically, they're, they look fine. But emotionally, of course, they're having a lot of stress because every time the cell phone rings, with the alarm, the earthquake 
Colomb. My tween girls are shaking and they cry. So, yeah, of course they're suffering a lot and under stress. But she can get advice from a medical team. Doctors and nurses have visited to instruct evacuees on precautionary measures. They are examining people to check for blood clots. And they are offering advice such as wearing compression stockings to help improve blood flow. People should drink a lot of liquid to stay hydrated, and they should move around, especially walking. The medical team said not moving around could cause even more complications, result in a deterioration of body systems, known as disuse syndrome. Seniors are most at risk. The health ministry has made leaflets for evacuees. They encourage more activity as they try to avoid any more consequences of the quakes. Keita Kato, NHK World. People around Japan are using the quakes as a reminder to be prepared. NHK World's Chikako Tanaka shows us what some people are doing. Konnichiwa. Misae Takekawa is a disaster prevention specialist. She's made sure her house is safe with quake-proofing measures. These would be used for drinking water, so I change it once a week. Like these two 20-liter tanks, she keeps in case the water goes out. Her interest was sparked by helping earthquake victims 12 years ago in northwestern Japan. She showed us what she's done to keep herself safe. Top of the furniture is a problem that can injure or trap people. So Takekawa has anchored the cupboard and the other furniture to the walls to prevent them from falling. She has various solutions to the shortages of water that happen in disaster areas. You don't need to throw away the bath water left in the tub. She says she can use it to flush the toilet and do the laundry. Takekawa makes sure to stock up on foods that last a long time such as noodles and canned goods. A portable gas stove is also a must to boil water in a blackout. But what worries Takekawa the most is an earthquake striking when she's in bed. She keeps a handmade protective hood under her pillow. I need to protect my head. Takekawa isn't the only one who's ready. The recent quakes in Kumamoto, as well as the giant 2011 quakes, have raised people's awareness about the need to be prepared. This shop provides quake-proofing supplies, including food for survival kits. It also sells portable gas stoves, boots, and electric flashlights. After the big earthquake on the 16th, more orders and inquiries came in from all over Japan. It highlights what Takekawa has believed for years. Being well prepared means not having to worry. I hope everyone recognized the importance of storing goods and taking anti-disaster measures. We cannot control the timing, but it is possible to think about how we can survive. Japan is a country prone to seismic activity, and last week's quakes have given people a jolt, instilling a fresh sense of awareness about how to protect themselves. Chikako Tanaka, NHK World.
move forward. 